All right, so if A is stored and measurable and epsilon is greater than zero, we want to prove that there is a compact Jordan measurable set, C, which is contained in A, such that the essentially the difference between A and C is less than epsilon in measure. Um, but the way that we phrase this is that if you take the set A set minus C, then the integral of the characteristic function of this set is less than epsilon. So um, let A be Jordan measurable, I'll abbreviate it like this, and epsilon greater than zero. Um, I think one of the key steps here is something that we get automatically from the previous exercise. So by exercise 3-21, there is a partition P of our space, which usually the space is A, but here A is the set, so we have to call it X, um, such that if we take the sum over all S and S1, the volume of S, minus the sum over all s in s2, the volume of s. Well, I'm just going to write this as the uh, um, sum of all s in s1 set minus s2, volume of s, just for to make our lives easier later. It's less than epsilon, where s1 contains rectangles intersecting A and S2 contains rectangles contained in A. And of course we can see that S2 is a subset of S1, which is why we can take this sum over all elements S and S1 set minus S2. Okay. So we basically, we use this to get our um, set C. So we let C be the union over all S in S2 of S. So it's the union of all elements in S. So we have to prove a bunch of things about C. We have to sh prove that it is a compact Jordan measurable set contained in A such that this integral holds. So let this be, um, okay, so we have this. Um, so for all S in S2, S is in A, and S, what, what do we know here? We know S is contained in A, and we know S is compact, and we know that the measure of the boundary of S is zero because it's a rectangle. So what that tells us is that C is also contained in A since it's a union of elements contained in A. And C is compact because, so let's see, your P is a partition, and partitions by definition are finite. So S2 must be a finite collection, and a finite collection of compact sets is compact. I'm guessing that was an exercise previously, but basically, yeah, it's straightforward because if you have a, um, if you have a cover of a union of, com of a finite union of compact sets, then that's also a cover of each compact set individually so each for each of each compact subset has a finite subcover and you put all those finite subcovers together and you get a finite subcover so you, you put together finitely many finite subcovers and you end up with a finite subcover of this finite union of compact sets but anyway so c is compact because it's a, union, a finite union of compact sets and the measure of the boundary of c is zero 
because it's a union of sets whose boundaries are zero. Well, the boundary of C is contained in the boundary. The boundary of C is contained in the union of the boundaries of the elements S, and so the boundary of C is contained in a union of sets of measure zero. And of course, with this being a countable union, in fact, in this case, a finite union, we know that that means that um, the set boundary of C has measure zero. Okay. So we actually just knocked out a whole bunch of things all at once, and it just comes immediately from uh, the properties of the sets that we're uh, unioning. Unionizing? I don't think I've ever heard that term referred to um, for unions, but it's actually sort of neat. Anyways, um, so now we want to prove that the integral of a set minus c of the indicator, that basically this is the integral of the characteristic function a set minus c. That's just what it is by definition. Okay, so what must we now prove? Um, We must now prove that a set minus c is Jordan measurable. There's an extra step here. We can't just assume that this that this integral exists because the problem told us that it exists. The fact that the problem is using this integral at all implies that the integral must exist, and so that must be something that we need to prove in the problem statement. Um, this is a thing like you have to prove these things. You have to you can't skip these details, even though it looks like it's just given to you, it's not, you gotta prove it. Um, and again, if anything like this is ever, um, I remember a professor telling me once, if anything like this in a problem statement is ever ambiguous, go with the most difficult interpretation of the problem. So the most difficult interpretation of this problem is that we have to prove that this integral actually exists. And in fact we do, and so we will. So, the boundary of a set minus c, or I'll just start with um, a set minus c is, George, is itself Jordan measurable because the boundary of a set minus c, so there's sort of a trick here, um, but basically if you think about um, like what this set looks like, well, if you, if you imagine sets A and C, you can sort of figure that, well, if we want to prove that the that A set minus C has boundary of measure zero, well, we want to contain it in sets of measure zero, and we know that both A and C have boundaries of measure zero. Um, well, we know that's true for A because we're told it's sort of measurable, and for C, we just proved it. Um, so we want to prove that this set is contained in the union of the boundary of A with the boundary of C. And in fact, we can do that. Um, because the boundary of, so A set minus C, well that's the same as A union C complement. And the boundary of the union of two sets is certainly going to be contained in the union of the boundaries. Um, this is contained in the boundary of A union the boundary of C complement. Is this an obvious fact? I think it should be. Um, if you've got something that's in the boundary of A union C, then you take a point and every neighborhood of that point needs to be contained in um, either in both A or not A or in both C and not C. Um, Yeah, I think this is an obvious fact, so we can just move forward from here. Um, if you're not convinced, you can go ahead and prove it. But even just thinking about it um, visually, like if you just picture two sets A and C, like the boundary of A union C being contained in the boundary of A union the boundary of C, you can just, yeah, any point that's in the boundary of A union C, it's got to be in the boundary of one of those two things. You can just think about it visually. Um, and of course, if that's 
if you're proving it for the first time or you're new to this, you have to actually prove it. Um, but we'll skip it. Anyway, so this is contained in this set. And now the boundary of a set's complement is equal to the boundary of the set itself. And so this is equal to the boundary of A union the boundary of C. So we've proven that the boundary of A set minus C is contained in the boundary of A union the boundary of C. So that means that the boundary of A set minus C is contained in a union of two sets of measure zero, because we know that both the boundaries of A and the boundary of C are measure zero. So this set itself has measure zero, and that's what it means to be Jordan measurable. Okay, so we know that this integral exists. So finally, we have this integral which again I'll write as so this is the integral of the indicator function just by definition now this integral exists so we can write this down and everything now this integral um, is going to be equal to the infimum of the upper sums over all partitions of this function so it will in particular be less than or equal to the upper sum for any particular partition. So let's go with the partition that we have here, P. So what do we know about this? Um, so if we look at this partition P, um, what is this sum going to look like? We have to take the sum So we need to take the sum over all elements in P which intersect A set minus C. Um, so we know if we have any, so certainly if something's an A set minus C, it needs to intersect A. So Basically, if you, if, you have a, if you have any rectangle in P, which does not intersect A, then this, in, this characteristic function will be zero there. So we don't need to sum up. At, so normally you'd have the sum over all rectangles in P of, um, here, I'll write it out. Um, the sum over all, um, I'll call it R in P. Um, no, I got we got to call S and P because the S's we're using S's are here. So the boundary, um, the maximum value on S of this function times the volume of S. So now, if you think about all the elements in P, well, it could be that S doesn't intersect A at all. In which case, this maximum M S chi A set minus C will evaluate to zero. So we don't include those at all. Um, similarly, if S is in this S2 collection that we have defined above, S2 contains things, rectangles which are contained in A. But S, S, this, oh man, no, never mind, C, we're good. C is the union of the elements of S2. So if this S if this element S and P, if it happens to be in S2, then it's a subset of C. And so chi of A set minus C, there will be zero. And so it will evaluate to zero. So all that's left is S1. So this is the sum over all S, which is in S1, but not in S2. Um, it's, it has to be in S1, because if it's not in S1, then it doesn't intersect. A and so it will evaluate to zero and it can't be in S2 because if it's in S2 then again it will evaluate to zero. So this is the only set that we can sum over which will give us positive values and we're summing this thing and so what is this maximum value? Well um, any set here it's going to intersect A um, at some point 
and it will not be entirely contained in C, so it will, there will be a point in, in any S, which is in S1, but not in S2, it will intersect A set minus C at some point. So the maximum there will be one. So this is going to be sum over this set of just the volume because the, the MS chi A set minus C is just one. And this, we know from the very beginning of the problem, is less than epsilon. All right, so given any Jordan measurable set A and any epsilon greater than zero, we know that there is a partition. We know that there is a set C which satisfies this condition. And we construct this set C using the partition P from the previous exercise. Um, and yeah, that's all there is to this problem, and so we're done.